everybody, it is Frankie here, and welcome to the 2024 NFL Week 9 predictions, folks. We are, as of this week, about to be halfway done with this NFL season. What a wild, wacky season it has been, and the best is yet to come. Let's get right to it. Let's get to Week 9 in the 2024 NFL season. We start with Thursday night, the Houston Texans and the New York Jets. The Jets, for some reason, I am trying to figure out for the logic, I mean, is C.J. Stroud, like, is, is his legs been amputated? I cannot understand this, but the Jets, for some reason, are a point favorite against the Houston Texans. The Texans, who, okay, their offense isn't, you know, world beaters, and Nico Collins is, or excuse me, Stefan Diggs, um, looks like he's going to have a serious knee injury here. It looks like he's going to be out for a while. They're already without Nico Collins. Um, I get it that Tank Dell is going to have to be the number one. He actually did all right against Indianapolis, four catches for 35 yards and a touchdown. Uh, and they cannot protect C.J. Stroud at all. That offensive line is is wretched. Uh, but fortunately, the defense has stepped up, um, and they were able to uh, lead helping that victory against Indianapolis. Uh, Mixon had a great rushing touchdown, just was really gutty there. And, uh, yeah, they, they, they pressured Anthony Richardson all game long to, to defeat uh, the Colts there. Uh, Richardson went 5 for 20 for 71 yards with a pick when he was pressured. When they, when they made him drop back and pass without play action, they really, really made him struggle. And we really saw the weaknesses in Anthony Richardson's game. So that was a good win. It was a gutty win, gutsy win for uh, Houston. But they got it there in the divisional matchup against the Colts. I cannot understand why the Jets are the favorites. The Jets are a complete and utter disgrace. Right now, this team, this team that we all thought, at least most of us thought was going to be a Super Bowl contender this year, that this was going to be one of the best teams in the league. They had all the pieces lined up. Rodgers back. They had everything ready. They had all pros on both sides of the ball. And this team is two and six. Two and six. They've lost five in a row. They've lost to a terrible Patriots team. A Patriots team that we all thought was going to fire Gerard, or people were starting to speculate, was going to fire Gerard Mayo midseason. There was all this speculation about it. I thought it was ridiculous myself. But this team was looking like it was about to collapse, and they beat the Jets. The Jets are a complete embarrassment. Greg Zerline needs to be cut now. I don't. The fact that this man is still getting uh, checks from the New York Jets is a disgrace. Everything about this team is embarrassing. They're unprepared. They burned three timeouts in the first quarter. Uh, they, you know, firing Sal clearly Sal. It was not all of his fault. Uh, the defense fell apart. You know, they let they let Jacoby Brissett just walk all the way down the field. Seventy yard touchdown drive to end the game. It, 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 as I mentioned, Zerline's bad. Rodgers isn't doing enough. The offense is struggling. Sauce Gardner is totally overrated. It is. Amazing to me how embarrassing this Jet season. I've seen a lot of bad Jet seasons. This might be the most embarrassing of them all. At least the most embarrassing since like 2011, 2012. Because this team had expectations. People thought this team was going to be good this year. And they've completely fallen apart. And as a, you know, look, they're not the worst New York team to perform this weekend. Because the, the Yankees are down 2 nothing in the World Series. But it is, uh, it's rough to see. It's embarrassing to see. And, I, you know, the Jets, it is really same old Jets here the last, the last couple of weeks. But it is truly embarrassing how far it has fallen. And sorry about that rant, but I just had to get that off my system. I'm going with the Texans here. The Jets are completely free-flowing right now. And again, I know the Texans are not playing ideal. I know that they're probably losing, you know, they're, again, they've already lost Collins. I know they're losing Diggs. But you can't tell me right now. The Texans, they're, they're a better team overall. And I know the Jets are at home, but they're a better team. They're, and they're just playing better right now. And I just, I think the Jets are going to continue to fall apart. And if the Jets want to win, they got to prove it to me. I thought they were going to beat the Patriots. So you know what? If the Jets want to prove to me that they're going to win, they better prove it to me against Houston. If they want to turn the season around, which I don't think is going to happen, they better do it now, but I don't think it's going to happen. Give me the Texans plus one over the Jets. The Dallas Cowboys and the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons are a point and a half favorite. Dallas continues to lose. They're not losing at home, at least they're losing on the road now. Uh, two picks from Dak. Um, it, it, they were both bad. I know this Cowboys team already has a bunch of injuries. They lost Parsons. They have Cooks. They have Nealon. They have Lawrence. Um, but still, this team should be better than this. Three and four. Um, they were in there in the game for a half, and then the third quarter, they just completely gave it up. Uh, the Niners um, outscored, outgained the Cowboys 167-16 to 16 in the third quarter. The Niners had 10, I believe they had like 14, 17 points in the third quarter, and the Cowboys had like 16 yards. Yeah, excuse me, 21 points the Niners had in the third quarter, and the Cowboys had 16 yards. Talk about completely just just giving up there in the third quarter. Uh, Dak is the first Cowboys quarterback with multiple picks in three straight games since Troy Aikman in 1992. And I know this is not a shock because it's hard to do this, but they had no answers for George Kittle at all. They just let the man just, just eat them up the entire game. And it looks rough here for Dallas. This is a team that is way too talented to be 3-4. and four. 
and nothing is going right for them. And, 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 you know, they have a rough schedule coming up. Atlanta, Philly, Houston, Washington. Those are not easy. This team could be five and six or four and seven by the time this four game stretch wraps up here. Now to Atlanta, who I think is going to win this game, as you can see by the picks. Um, Atlanta looking good here. Uh, four touchdowns in this game. They were lucky, though, because Pitts should have lost that touchdown there. I don't know how that wasn't overturned, but NFL apparently does not have cameras on the goal line, so Pitts was avoided, which would have been a complete... Um, he would have been the laughing stock of the league, and you uh, avoided that there. Cousins, great game. Four touchdowns, two to Pitts, one to Mooney, one to Robinson and the Falcons here. Uh, Bates had a great game. He had the pick. He forced the fumble. Atlanta, um, right now, the... The definite favorites right now in the NFC South. They're 4-0 and against the division rivals. And they already have two wins over Tampa Bay. They look like they are the... Especially with New Orleans falling apart here. And forget about Carolina. They're clearly the favorites. Cousins has more touchdowns against the Bucks this season than he does against the rest of the league. He has eight touchdowns in two games against them. And he has six um, in the other six. First Falcons quarterback with three touchdowns in the first half since Matt Ryan in 2020. And yes, great game for Kyle Pitts. A true uh, breakout game from him. 36-yard touchdown and then the 49-yard touchdown that he, that he should have lost, but it was good to see him out there um, having that kind of performance. Great win for Atlanta. Um, and now they go up against Dallas, a Dallas team that is struggling, a Dallas team that is faltering. And you know what? I'm going to roll with Kirk Cousins here. I'm going to roll with Atlanta. I'm going to roll with that offense. Uh, as long as Dallas continues to have the injuries that they have and until they are still the you know messed-up machine that they are, until they are a stronger unit, I'm not going to trust them right now. I'm gonna roll with Atlanta at home. They got the they got the mojo. They got the advantage. I'm gonna trust the Falcons. Give me the Falcons minus one and a half over Dallas. The Miami Dolphins and the Buffalo Bills. The Bills are six and a half point favorites. Here's how bad it is for Tua Tagovailoa. He slid. I think it was in the first half. He slid on a play. He ran out. He slid, and the fans went crazy. We all just are like, please, Tua, don't get hurt. At least he finally learned how to slide. But um, I was still wondering watching this game, like, why is Tua out there? Like this season is over for the Dolphins. Even if he hadn't, even if he had hadn't come back, or even if he had never gotten hurt, this game showed all the problems that Miami still has. You know, the defense hasn't been great, and their offense still has a lot of concerns. Um, I mean, I, again, I know they put up 27 points, but it, it was against, it was against the Cardinals defense allowing the six most yards per game. So you know, maybe maybe it shouldn't have been, um, shouldn't have been, shouldn't have been that big of a surprise. But yeah, the offense really hasn't. Yeah, they should have done more. Couldn't get enough. The defense didn't do enough. It's sad watching Odell that this, you know, if this is the end of Odell's career, how sad is this? Um, that he's not been able to, um, if his career is going to go out down like this, it's a real shame as someone who grew up an Odell fan uh, watching him on the Giants. Um, yeah, just tough loss there for Miami. Defense bad, as I mentioned. Uh, Buffalo. Josh Allen finally threw a pick. He's washed. It took until week eight for him to throw a pick, but uh, he was, uh, to me, this changes week to week, but to me, he's now the MVP favorite after Lamar's loss, and I thought Lamar played great. But after the loss and after Buffalo's win, I think Allen is now um, the MVP favorite. And, you know, it's one and two between them. They've been the two best quarterbacks in the league. He was, he's was he been awesome this year, and he was awesome again uh, today. 24 for 34, 283 yards, two TDs. Uh, one of those TDs to Keon Coleman, um, who he and Coleman are really establishing some really good chemistry. Those guys are really clicking here. And so that was great to see him perform as well as he has. And by the way, the Allen pick was on a slip by Amari Cooper. So it's not his fault there. Um, Bill's making the case for the best team in the AFC. I would, I would guess, I guess after the last seven games, you have to take the Chiefs in that regard. But they're all around great. They really dominated against Seattle. Uh, the run defense really stepped up there. Um, they had minus, Seattle had minus one rushing yards on 10 attempts in the first half. They finished with a season low of 32. Got to give credit to James Cook, too. He had two touchdowns, 111 yards, seven rushing touchdowns, the most by a Bills player in the first eight games of a season since Travis Henry had eight all the way back in 2003. So the Bills are really looking good here. All around, they're dominant. And they're up against a Miami team that is struggling to get into that, uh, really struggling to get going here now with Tua back. At home, Miami is just kind of floundering here. I'm going to roll with the Bills. I'm going to take the B B Buffalo here to dominate on both sides of the ball. Um, and I'm, I think Tua will be, hopefully Tua is, every game I'm watching Tua, I'm just, just please be okay. Just make it through the whole game without getting hurt. But, whether Tua is okay or not, my Buffalo is just too good right now, and Allen will continue his dominant season. Give me the Bills minus six and a half in this divisional matchup against the Dolphins. The Las Vegas, Las Vegas Raiders and the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals are eight point favorites. Credit to the Bengals. Uh, I am really drunk here. Sorry, folks. Credit to the Raiders for fighting hard uh, against Kansas City. Kansas City had to grind that win out, but still, they, they couldn't figure it out. The Raiders had the ball twice inside the Chiefs' five-yard line, and they can only muster three points out of that. 
you know, they, they can't run the ball at all. Um, so this is still just a really terrible team. Bengals. Um, this is a team that should be better than it is. That should not be, what are they, three and four, three and five? This should not be a team that is winless in four home games. Um, the defense, bad. Offense, really fizzled. There is a lot of chatter about firing Zach Taylor. I don't know if the franchise that gave Marvin Ta- uh, Marvin Lewis 16 years is going to fire Zach Taylor right away, especially after he led the Bengals to a Super Bowl in 2022. But, I mean, they've, they've clearly not been as explosive as they should have been um, this season. Uh, it, it just seems like there's just... They're not getting anything going. The run game has been bad. They, they, you know, at one point in this game, they had 48 rushing yards on 17 carries. Uh, you know, yes, Burrow and Chase are great together. We know that, but there still is too many problems. The offense just cannot get much else going. It seems like, and the defense cannot stop anyone. And yeah, they, they let the, the Eagles just destroy them in the second half of this game. I mean, they, they couldn't stop Jalen Hurts, and the, again, the Eagles have been kind of iffy here. So they really let the Eagles get back into vintage Eagles there. And by vintage Eagles, I mean 2022 Eagles. So they really stepped up in this game. So now they take on Las Vegas, and I'm going to take the Raiders here to cover. I think the Bengals win, but especially with the Bengals' struggles at home and the fact that their offense isn't clicking right now, I think it's actually going to be a close game. I think the Bengals win because it would be a disaster if they didn't, but I'm going to say that the Raiders cover and actually make it a, you know, they make a game out of it, seven, six points, but the Bengals win because there's just too much talent on that team. If they lose that one, then we have some real concerns, but I do think the Raiders cover, make a game of it, but the Bengals win. Give me the Raiders plus eight. The Los Angeles Chargers and the Cleveland Browns. The Chargers are two and a half point favorites. Welcome to the NFL, Lad McConkey. Um, traded for him in the second round of the 2024 draft, and this was his breakout performance here against New Orleans. Caught all six of his targets. He finished with 111 yards and two touchdowns. One of those was a 60 yard touchdown. The first Chargers rookie receiver with 100 receiving yards and a touchdown in a game since 2013, Keenan Allen. So that was good there for the Chargers. Really helped out Justin Herbert there. Defense really stepped up in this game. Um, they got to worry about the pass protection. You know, Herbert was sacked three times. Fifth straight game, he's been sacked multiple times. But there's still a lot of good to be um, to look at here with the Chargers and the other offense, especially today. Um, just really getting to a crumbling New Orleans team. Man, Cleveland, you're just so much better when you don't have Deshaun Watson on the team. You bring in Jameis Winston, and I mean, you reach 20 points for the first time all year. That, that last touchdown at the end of the game, that was amazing. That incredible. And yeah, the Ravens probably should have, there were a couple times in this game, the Ravens should have had the interception there late, but that last touchdown that Winston threw, that was a sight to behold. A lot of magic there with Cleveland. And um, it, was, it was a great moment. Their announcer, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting his name, uh, passed away this week. Great tribute by me. I'm forgetting the, the, the name of the announcer who passed away, but he was much beloved by Cleveland fans. And so uh, to win that game at home, very special uh, meaning for them. And I saw the radio team react it, and they were very excited about, they were very emotional about the win. So that was great there for Cleveland. Um, I thought about taking Cleveland here because Cleveland now has that mojo. They have Jameis there. I was thinking maybe you know, they can win two in a row. They're still at home. They can pull off something. But I'm going to roll with the Chargers. I'm going to roll with this uh, this offense here. And, I, and I'm not convinced. I mean, it'd be crazy if the Chargers, if the Browns all of a sudden just went on this crazy run. Now, this might be a pick I'm going to end up regretting next week. But right now, I'm, I, I just think the Chargers are a much more talented team. I think that was more of a fluke by the Browns. So I'm going to roll with the Chargers. Minus two and a half. Justin Herbert and company. Give me the Chargers. Minus two and a half over Cleveland. The New England Patriots and the Tennessee Titans. The Titans are three-point favorites. Um, this is one of the two games this week that I don't care much about. Um... Drake May, let's hope he's okay. He's got a concussion in this game. But uh, the Patriots are, are still a bad team. But they did. That was a great win for them. Um, that was also, shout out to May. Great touchdown there. The 17-yard run. That was special. He then gets a concussion. Uh, Jacoby Brissett comes in, and he leads them on a 12-play, 70-yard drive to win and really put a dagger in the New York Jets football season. That really uh, put an end to it there. Um, so that was great to see there. And you know, I'm glad that Gerard Mayo, who people were talking about, maybe he's going to get fired this week. I'm glad that... That seems to have calmed down here. I want to see the guy you know, in a rebuilding year. I want to see the guy give, get more of a chance. Uh, and hopefully he can develop into a pretty good coach. Maybe not Belichick, but hopefully he can develop into a good coach. Tennessee, just... Ooh, they might be the worst team in the league, folks. There's, there's like no... I mean, Mason Rudolph, somehow worse than Will Levis, which is really impressive to do. Give it up 50 to Detroit, which no one has done in like 25 years. All right, I got to take somebody. I guess I'm going to hope that... Drake May is back. I'll take the Patriots. This is not a game that I really had any interest in picking. Someone's got to win it. So give me the Patriots plus three. The New Orleans Saints and the Carolina Panthers. The Saints are six and a half point favorites. Another game that I really don't want to pick. Saints got absolutely killed by the Chargers. Uh, they have just a million injuries. The offense. I mean, you're turning the Jake Hat Hayner in the game. I mean, that's how desperate they are. And uh, Carolina, 
losing to Denver there. Bryce Young looked okay. He had he looked a little bit better, but still not great. Um, I I think the Saints win this one. But when I saw that line, Saints plus six, plus six and a half, or Saints minus six and a half, I said to myself, this Saints team is not good enough to be giving six and a half. Even I know Bryce Young is not good, but maybe Andy Dalton gets uh, somehow gets in there. Maybe if Andy's thumb is ready, maybe he'll be uh, he'll get in there. So I just can't trust the Saints to have six and a half points. I just can't trust it. So give me the Panthers plus six and a half over the Saints. The Denver Broncos and the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens nine and a half point favorites. Denver has looked much better here. How about Bonix? Folks, I was critical of Bonix early on in the season. I was wrong. He's really stepped up here. 220 yard passing yards in the first half. Um, more than he's had in all but one game this season. So, I know it's Carolina, but still an impressive performance. On National Tight Ends Day, the Broncos tight ends had 17 catches for 136 yards. So, it was a great win there for Denver to get things going. Baltimore. Um, wow. Awful loss. Um, really kind of the loss that just made you scratch your head there. You know, if anyone wants to criticize Lamar Jackson anymore, just watch this game. Lamar was carrying this team, man. He was doing everything he could. I know he wasn't perfect, but he was doing everything he could in this game. And his receivers were dropping balls. And Kyle Hamilton's dropping a ball. And I, that, that should have won the game. Like, he's trying, man. And they were just giving him nothing today. I felt so bad for Lamar. Um, but, yeah, and, and the defense there. That was the 21st completion of 25 or more yards given up by Baltimore. The winning touchdown at the end of the game. And, yeah, I know that they're already missing a couple of their corners. But, yeah, just that, that was an awful Awful loss. Another collapse for the Ravens. The eighth loss when leading inside the final two minutes of the fourth quarter since the start of the 2022 season. That is the most such losses in the NFL over that span. They've also allowed more points than anybody in the fourth quarter this year. The Ravens just cannot finish at all. But they're going up against the Broncos team that is getting better but still not great. And they're going to be at home. I think Lamar's going to be pissed off. I think he's going to use that as motivation here. I think the Ravens win this one by two touchdowns. Get back on track. They're a great team. Lamar's a great quarterback. They show that here in this game coming up. Give me the Ravens minus nine and a half over Denver. The Jacksonville Jaguars and the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles are seven-point favorites. Jacksonville, tough loss against Green Bay. I saw somebody say today, is the Jaguar season over? I'm like, I thought it already was. This, I mean, this just you're just shoveling the dirt on it now. But um, what are they, two and six now? How much longer does Doug Peterson have? Like, Shad Khan said that he expected to make the playoffs, and if not, like, there was going to be, their jobs might be in jeopardy. I, or he said there was going to be changes to be made. What else do you need to see, Shad? Like, it's time to move on. It's time to move on. Doug's not doing it. And Trent ba- Balky, same thing. Time to move on from these guys. Eagles, on the other hand. Boy, they're back. The Eagles are back. We were waiting for this team to really step up. They have. Jalen Hurts has been phenomenal as of late. Yesterday, 16 for 20, 273 yards, four touchdowns. And that's passing and running. He had two touch pushes. He had a terrific throw to Devontae Smith. It's good. Get that guy back in the game more often. He's a great receiver. Find a way to incorporate him in the offense. The Eagles defense really stepped up. You know, holding, you know, they held the Browns and Giants to a total of 12 points the past two weeks. And now they're going up against Cincinnati, which is an electric offense. And they shut them to 17 points. It was a slow start for, for, for Philadelphia. Um, eighth straight game where they failed to score in the first quarter, but yet they figured it out, they calmed down, they got things going. And yeah, as I mentioned, Hertz was great. And yeah, just the Eagles were just in complete control of this game as they really uh, torched Cincinnati. So the Eagles are back on, back on, they're back in, in they're back where they should be. They got the momentum. Hertz isn't turning the ball over. They look like they are back to 2022, 2023 Philadelphia Eagles. I'm going to take the Eagles here to keep it going, to keep this rolling as they're seven-point favorites. Jacksonville is a team that is shutting down here. Philadelphia continues to improve on the offensive and the defensive side, and I think in this game that shows. Give me the Eagles minus seven at home to win over the Jaguars. The Chicago Bears and the Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals are a point favorite. Um, Bears fans, I'm so sorry. That is about as excruciating as a loss as you can have. And look, it's not all on the Hail Mary, even though, you know, if, if you would, just if your defender hadn't been so busy, you know, yakking at fans and then tipping the ball up to uh, to, to uh, Washington there for the game-winning touchdown, you know, things could have been different. But, you know, you also had the fumble at the goal line. Give it to the big man. He can't come up with it. You had that last play beforehand where I don't know what the defense was thinking. You let the you let the Cardinals get in Hail Mary range, so that was bad. Caleb had a, a rough game for him, although maybe some of that was due to the offensive line being terrible. But you were 10 for 24, 131 yards. Um, this great Bears offense that we've seen so much of, not being able to... to not being able to step up. 
And yeah, just 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 a bag. The red zone defense um really struggled here in this game. And I mean, uh, excuse, excuse me, they held the Commanders to four field goals on five attempts, but um they, they weren't able to you know they weren't able to get it done in the end. Uh, and that's why they kept the game close, but it wasn't enough though. I mean, you you, you hold Washington at, at you hold Washington at, at near the end of the game, twelve points. You think you can win that, but the Hail Mary there at the end again just killed them. Cardinals, on the other hand, looking good. Looking real solid. Kyler Murray is playing about as well as we've seen him play. 300 yards, two touchdowns. Thank God you're using Marvin Harrison. Use that man. That man is a great, great receiver. Find a way to get him in the game. 111 yards and a diving touchdown on five catches. Um, 38 yards in the fourth quarter. He is a, a terrific young talent. Got to try to figure out a way to use him more. And he got him involved in this game. And that was impressive. Chad Weiland with the game-winning kick. Arizona maybe putting an end to Miami season there. Thought about taking Arizona in this game because their offense is really clicking here. But I still think the Bears are a good team. Um, I think they're a better team. They're going to be pissed off after what happened. They're on the road. I thought about taking Arizona at home, though. But it, this was a back and forth. But I said, you know what? Chicago's going to be pissed off. And we're going to see. A, I think Caleb's going to bounce back in a big way. And I think the Bears win this one. Um I don't know if it's going to be a blowout. I think it's going to be a close one. Two of the exciting young quarterbacks in the league. This should be fun. But I think the Bears cover, win, and it's going to be a great game between these two. But I think Caleb does more than Kyler. Give me the Bears plus one in an exciting game between two of the hottest young quarterbacks in the league. Bears over Cardinals. The Detroit Lions and the Green Bay Packers. The Lions are three and a half point favorites. For the first time since Thanksgiving 1997, the Detroit Lions scored 50 points in a game. It's been a rough, rough go of it for the Lions. This is their best start since 1956. The futility with the Detroit Lions has been noticeable for the last 70 years, 60 years. But right now, this is the most fun team in the league. Um, they're, they're just, they just do so much on offense. I mean, well, look at the Montgomery passing touchdown to the Laporta. Like, who's deciding that kind of play? But that was great to see. You had the special teams make so many big plays today. The Raymond Punt return. Goff barely had to do anything. Goff threw 85 yards, and it didn't matter. The Lions scored 50. Montgomery had a nice touchdown. Gibbs had that 70-yard touchdown. They were just in dominant. And yes, the Titans are crap, but they were dominant in all three phases of the game. They looked so controlling. They put up 35 points in the first half for the first time since 1970. And they did this all with the Lions offensive line being bad and letting Jared Goff get sacked three times in the, in the first quarter. So despite all that, they still scored 50. They were still dominant. So, great win for Detroit, and to me, yes, they've more than secured their spot as the best team in the NFC. Green Bay. You know Malik Willis has more wins than Aaron Rodgers? <laughs> you know how sad that is for Jet fans? Um, sad to see Love go out. You just hope this man could stay healthy. It's, it's always something with him. Now it's a great injury. You hope it's okay. But Malik Willis has done, I've been so impressed with him. He's done such a great job bouncing back in such a difficult situation for him to be in, such a difficult spot, and he always comes through. He's 3-0 with his team. Um, it helps that, you know, you got Josh Jacobs going in with 127 yards. You have, you know, the defense who has forced 18 turnovers so far this season. They've been on another level. And they were able to come through and get a big win against Jacksonville. And you just hope that Love is going to be healthy, going to be able to go. You want to see the two best, these two great teams go at it at full health. But the Packers, you know, have a bunch of injuries anyway on that front, even without Love. I'm going to roll with the Lions here. I think they are a better team right now. I know the Lions are on the road, but I think they're they're a better team on the road. Um, should be an exciting matchup there. It's going to be a very exciting atmosphere there in Green Bay. But the Lions are just so dominant right now in every facet of the game that I think that will lead to a victory here. And especially if we don't know, if Willis is playing, and Willis has been good, but especially if Willis is playing, then I feel much more confident taking the Lions here. Three and a half point favorites. I'm loving the Lions right now. Give me Detroit minus three and a half over Green Bay. The Los Angeles Rams and the Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks are a point favorite. Rams are back. We talked about the Eagles being back. So are the Rams. This team scored 30 against Minnesota. Now with Cooper Cup back. Now with Puka Nakua back. This team looks great. The NFC West is a very winnable division right now. There's three teams at 4-4. Four and four. This is looking like a really uh, a great chance for the Rams to bounce back in a big way and win this division. And yeah, they played great against Minnesota. Um, got, uh, you know, Stafford had a really good game. Offense just looked like they're clicking here and they're bouncing back in a, in a nice way. 
Seattle, just a terrible game against Buffalo in every facet. They were bad offense, defense, special teams. You were hoping that they would be able to, you know, for their sake, you were hoping they'd be able to, you know, bounce back, get, get, get things on the right track at home. But no, uh, I mean, and they, they had a 20 point road win against Atlanta. You know, they, 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 they had lost three in a row. They come back, they beat Atlanta, who'd won three straight. They 20 point road win. Now they're four and three, first place in the NFC West. And then a week later, they get destroyed by Buffalo. And there's so many mistakes. Geno trips over a teammate. They commit 11 penalties for 82 yards. There was a bad snap that thwarted a drive. Just bad in every facet. And they did not get one hit on Josh Allen. Pass Josh was atrocious too. So the Seahawks not looking so great. Rams are on the rise. And for that reason, in this divisional matchup, I'm going to roll with the Rams on offense. Stafford, Cup, Nakua, all around uh, defeat the Rams here. Or defeat the Seahawks in a very interesting matchup here. Divisional match. One point, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Rams take I know the Seahawks are at home, but I would not be surprised if the Rams became favorites by the end of the week. Just because Seattle is very up and down and the Rams look like they're going in the right direction. So give me the Rams plus one. Over Seattle. The Indianapolis Colts and the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings are seven-point favorites. I'm really losing faith in Anthony Richardson. I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to think, oh, maybe, maybe he can put... The key's not improved much. He's halfway through his second season, and he's, he's not stepping up. 10 for 32 against Houston. 175 yards, a touchdown and a pick. He's under 50% completion on the year. And yes, you know, there's there's drops. The offensive line isn't great. The play calling isn't great. But he's not really helping himself out here. You you don't want to be ten starts into your career and still be considered a developmental quarterback. When are you gonna get better? Ten for thirty two hundred thirty yards. When are you gonna get better? And look, it's not all his fault. There's still you know there's still a lot of problems with the Indianapolis team. But you know he, again he's not helping himself out here. And yeah, and boy this team really needs Michael Pittman. They they need. Um, or they really need Michael Pittman to step up. One pass for 16 yards, and maybe he's still playing hurt, but yeah, there's nobody on this team that's helping him out right now. It's just it's just a bad situation. And if the Colts, I don't know if the Colts are going to feel like they have, but if they want to save their season, they might go to Flacco. So I would actually take the Colts here if I knew Flacco was playing. But because it's Minnesota, I don't know, and I'm assuming they're going to stay with Richardson. Um, I'm going to take the Vikings. Even though Minnesota starting to fall apart here. Things were looking good to start the year, and now they've lost two in a row. Um, their defense bad. They've allowed 61 points in two losses over five days. And yes, that should have been a face mask call, but the NFL is officiating is bad. You just have to deal with that. Could not get to Matthew Stafford at all. They pressured him on only three of his 34 dropbacks. So yeah, just the defense really faltered and the defense was maybe the highlight, I guess I said highlight, but the defense was real. Uh, one of the, you know, one of the, one of the best in the league in the first five, six weeks of the year. And now they've really dropped here in the last couple of weeks. So uh, I expect in this game against a bad Indianapolis, against if, if the Vikings defense is as good as we think they can be, then this is the opportunity to show how good you can be against a terrible quarterback in Anthony Richardson. They have a chance to step up, and I think they will. At home on Sunday Night Football, the Vikings deliver and get the return of Sam Darnold being good Sam Darnold, at least for his sake, we hope so. Give me the Vikings minus seven over Indianapolis. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs are eight and a half point favorites. Tampa Bay, tough loss against Atlanta. Uh, their defense really faltered down the stretch. Uh, Bucks fans really getting annoyed with Todd Bowles as you know the defensive genius uh, did not have a great game. He's had a couple games here right where he struggled. Um, you try to see if, what this team can do without Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, and the answer is not enough. Um, you're trying on, you're, with the running back. You're trying with, uh, with Kate Otten. Um, it, it's it's just not enough. They they're just thinking and dunking. But until Evans returns, it's just you can't um, you can't allow, you can't get those big plays from this team. And uh, their pass defense is really struggling here. They couldn't get, to, they struggled against the Atlanta uh, pass, uh, the, the Atlanta offense a lot during this game. And so we'll see what goes on. I expect, um, now the Chiefs do surrender 83 yards per game to opposing tight ends going into week eight. So, and Kate Otten, who scored two touchdowns in this game, you would expect that he's going to step up and maybe you know, make Kansas City um, have to work for it. Now, the Kansas City does have a great run defense, so that should be you know interesting to see um, who, uh, who ends up winning out there. But I do expect Tampa Bay to cover in this game, even though Kansas City somehow is still 7-0. Kansas City cannot lose at all. The offense looked better. Still not top tier, but the offense looked better. Got DeAndre Hopkins in there. It's going to take him a while to get, you know, get him used to everything. No problem, though. Kareem Hunt, he's found the fountain of youth. Travis Kelsey finally got a touchdown. He had his probably his best uh, receiving day of the year. Defense has been awesome. They have just, just so many times stopping... Uh, the Raiders, they forced a fumble in this game. They stopped them on fourth down. Just 
just an excellent, excellent uh, showing here from this defense. And yeah, the offense is the star of this team, but the defense right now has been the best thing about it. And that's what, if, if this team is going to win right now, it's going to be because this defense is just elite. So eight and a half points at home for Kansas City on Monday night. I'm going to take Tampa. Um, I know their offense is, is Dinkin' Nuggets, as I mentioned, but um, I expect I expect Otten's going to have a great game. And Kansas City right now, they're, they're not covering a lot of spreads. I took the Raiders in this one, and I was very happy I did. Um, they covered that spread, and I think they'll cover this one too. I think Tampa will cover this spread here. Kansas City is... Again, they've not they've not shown to me that they can be a dominant team. They, they have not put together a performance like the Lions did today or yesterday. Um, they just don't have that capacity to just have that great offensive explosion that we know they can have. So in this instance, Tampa Bay is an eight and a half point underdog. I think that's more than enough to cover. I think Kansas City wins, but Tampa Bay does cover in this one. Give me the Bucks plus eight and a half to not upset but cover over the Chiefs. But I think the Chiefs will remain eight and zero, and I think the Chiefs will remain. The I guess best team in the NFL. I, you know, I, I hate to, like, I guess admit it because I don't feel like they're playing like it. But they keep winning. All these other teams that I feel like are more talented than them, they keep losing. You know, the Ravens lose, the Bills lose. You know, Detroit loses. All these teams, Minnesota loses, Buffalo loses. All these teams lose. I don't, I don't know who else I mentioned. San Francisco loses. All these great teams keep losing. Kansas City never loses. So for that, you should give them respect as the best team in the NFL, even though they might not be playing like it all the time. That's it for now, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to this channel, like to see, make sure you subscribe down below. I'll be back tomorrow to preview Washington and New York. I will see you guys then for that. And don't forget to check out Frankie Baseball for more on the continuing calamity that is known as the New York Yankees and Aaron Judge. I will have recaps for Game 3 and Game 4. That will probably be the end of the World Series. I'll have recaps for all of you guys then. See you then. Take care. And God bless.